You're looking really beautiful today. It's like we're in the Devaloka. Well, Prasnotra Satsanga, what do we have today? After your realization in the case of Jelani that you had a vision of a peacock. And I was wondering what is the significance of the peacock and why Lord Muriga chose this symbol and also if this would be a desirable bird to have living in our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> We used to have a lot of peacocks here, but they ate all the new things we planted. <laughs> so now the peacocks are all over the island, in various places. <coughs> it is a significant, wonderful bird, a symbol of Lord Muruga. Why he chose that uh, way to come, I don't know. Never said. <laughs> Would you speak today about um, disappointment and its uh, importance on the path? Is it important <laughs> on the path? What disappointment comes into everyone's life when they're expecting something that they don't get right away, and or somebody lets them down? But we have to live a mountaintop consciousness. Always be on the mountaintop, holding the overview. This means we have to realize the law of karma. And often we're short-sighted. We don't get what we want because if we got it, it wouldn't do what we want it to do. It might cause us harm. And of course, people will always let you down if you depend on people. The whole idea of sanatana dharma is depend on the self within. That will never let you down. The timeless, causeless self, the very heart of the mind to conceive that, the self that's all pervasive, the energy in me, the energy in you, coming from Shiva, pervades the entire universe. It's easy for the mind to conceive. That will never let you down. It's always there. The light that lights up your thoughts. All the thoughts that you have, have a light that lights them up. Every visualization that you make is, is lit up by a light, and that's your inner light. That'll always be there. It lights up bad thoughts, it lights up good thoughts, it doesn't discriminate. It's always there, steady. That's what we have to depend on, not people. There are two kinds of people that teach us. Everyone's our teacher. Some people teach us what to do, and other people teach us, by example, what not to do. But to gain discrimination between the two, that's the art. Well, thanks to modern day science, I remember the world before science. You could drink water out of any stream. You could breathe the air in any city, it wouldn't kill you. It was a wonderful world before science. The science has done wonderful things, very wonderful things. However, a lot of other things of pollution and disease and all of that is also because of science. And one thing that science took away from us and has never given back is the knowledge that we are a part of ecology. That human beings are a part of ecology. The vital part of ecology, 
is not separate from it. The controllers of it or the onlookers looking into it or the adjusters of it, they're definitely a part of ecology. With that in mind, the whole mass thinking would change. For instance, here on Kauai, we have now uh, about 50,000 people. I was told that there used to be like 200,000 people living on this island, living all over the island, on the other side too. And they had their crop cycles and their fishing cycles, and, and they lived a very productive life. And now the island can barely sustain, in modern day living, 50,000 people. The difference is, the early Hawaiian people knew that they were part of the birds and the trees and the plants and everything. Knew that they were part of ecology. The people here today, they think they're not part of it at all. So we have overpopulation uh, right here. A, few, a number of years ago, we had an overpopulation of frogs. And that, that adjusted itself. Back to over humans, souls have to take physical birth even for a short time to fulfill their, their evolution. That I think is very important to for everyone to realize that whatever we do affects everything else. That's one of Lord Ganesha's great teachings, and that's also some good thing that science has done. It taught us that we make a movement like this, and it affects something far out in the universe. Everything is connected to everything else. Sacred is secret in all religions because if you talk about your inner experiences, you make them outer experiences and you stop the process. So you have an inner experience going on. Now that has been building maybe for years before it becomes an experience that you're, you have uh, recognized as an experience. It doesn't just happen like that. It builds up and you don't even know it's in the background. And then all of a sudden it's experience. So you only talk to your guru about it, that's all. Guru can heighten that process. Talk to somebody else, you bring the experience to a lower level, to your conscious mind, and you stop the process temporarily. So it's sacred to keep a secret. Also, Many people talk about their inner experiences and it comes tantamount to bragging. That stops all the processes and builds up a new marga, the Anala marga. And that has a different guru, Vishwa Guru Maharaj. He's the guru of the Anala marga. The world is the guru of the ego.